welcome back to Feedback Loop. I'm Joey. I'm Jeremy. And this week we're happy, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Always. We are the happiest men yeah, on the planet. Man. Uh, this week we're talking about an album that I picked called uh, Good Luck and Do Your Best by Gold Panda. And it's, it's, That's a happy uh, sentiment, so you know. Yeah, I know it we're, is. We're in the right place. We're in the right mindset. It's uh, coming off of, coming hard off of, uh, you know, Nurture, the, the <laughs> album that we gushed about for almost two hours last week. Yeah. But <laughs> what an album. Uh, yeah, for <laughs> real. And lest this turn into just Nurture 2.0, uh, I picked this because I kind of got some similar vibes and I made some discoveries along the way because I mm-hmm. hadn't really given this this album at least I didn't think I had given it too much thought whenever it first came out because I listened to Gold Panda back in like the Lucky Shiner Companion, like 20. I probably got into them whenever I first started working at Unnamed Pizza Place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, like the, the two albums that I heard were Lucky Shiner and Companion. And that was, I mean, they had been out for maybe a year or two at, at the time. So yeah, that was like, like the 2013-ish area. Yeah. Right? It was like 2013, I think, whenever I started listening to them. Got into them through somebody else that worked there. Uh, and um, Are you yeah. going to name drop this person? Maybe. I mean, I guess I'll name drop him. His name is David. So mm-hmm. uh, that's a pretty common name. So good luck. It is a very common name. <laughs> David from Pizza Place <laughs> in southern Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that's all we've given people. Yeah, there we go. Go find them. Although they know us and they know... I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. People people who already know us, that's fine, whatever. People who yeah. don't know us, figure it out. Why not? I mean <laughs> <laughs> if you can guess, if you can find the David, you'll you'll win a prize. The yeah. prize is being correct. I yeah, guess. and having the knowledge that you know a little <laughs> bit more about my personal life, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So yes. We're bearing it you. all on the line this week for Gold Panda. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, so like this album came out in 2016. I was I, I was a much different person. I, I had a... At the time this came out, it came out May 27th, 2016. So it's almost been five years since this album has come out. But I had like a six-month-old at the time. So I was just a very different person. And this album, it just didn't... I felt like I didn't give it enough of a chance at that time because I didn't... I don't know, I didn't have as much time as I previously did. You weren't enjoying life as much. <laughs> Well, it, this album, I'll, I'll get into it later, but it has, as I was listening to it, I was like, wait a second, there's some things that I remember about this that I didn't remember that I remembered, I guess. Right, because uh, when you have a six-month-old, your, your life is a blur. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is, a, this is a cool album, is all I'll say right now, but, you know, I, I hope you liked it, but uh, we'll, we'll just get right into the album art, it's... It's got just, it's like a photo of like what looks like some sort of elderly, um, I'm guessing an Asian policeman. That's racist. Of, of some, well, I know he, <laughs> I know, so he looks Asian. Just because, just because it's panda, you think Asia, and you think anyone who has panda in their name has to take photos of Asian men. Well, I, I know the uh, gold panda man. He uh personally, you know. Dur- no, I don't. <laughs> I know that he lived in Japan for a while, and he has a lot of uh just general Asian themes in his sure. stuff. And I mean, it's an elderly Asian policeman looking yeah, no, at the guy. Like, absolutely looks like he's some like <laughs> looking Asian, Asian policeman. Kind he's of looking at like a tag in front of some bamboo shoots, and it's just it's just a little photo of just a guy, a candid shot of a guy on a street. You know, what does it mean, Joey? I have literally no idea what it means. But. That's how I feel about this album, uh, including track number one, Metal Bird. So, what do you think about it, huh? Uh, it's a song. <laughs> is it? <laughs> it is. is. It really? Yeah, so, so Metal Bird starts off, it's got this kind of like glitchy, sample kind of sound, which is, I was thinking about it, and I've talked a bit about having uh, Joey music as a thing, as a concept in my brain, it's like, oh yeah, that's Joey music, right? I think I talked about it in our first episode with Dan Deacon being like, oh yeah, that makes sense. It's Joey music. Probably. I think over the course of us doing this podcast, I've like kind of redefined that. And I think this also fits within Joey music, <laughs> uh, which is, is not a negative. I just yeah. want to get, the, get that straight because it's not like, 
I'm not saying I dislike this album. I don't. I enjoy this album, but um, it's like it's very sampley, and I, I've learned over like the last year and few months, year, year, buck and a half, you know, whatever, that you really like enjoy a lot of like sampley and, and loopy kind of things. Loopy as in like looped samples. Yeah, not being. loopy as in like woo <laughs> right. <laughs> Which I mean you also probably get into that. But yeah, this sure, is like not. an alternative definition. So you, you got your like Nana Grizzle kind of indie punk rock kind of stuff that is still definitely Joey music. That is the original Joey music and that will always <laughs> be Joey music to me. But then there's this this other aspect of Joey that I've that I've brought into the circle. And I think this fits it perfectly. It it's got kind of that lo fi vinyl crackliness on it and the, the looped nature of the samples and stuff makes it feel like it's a skipping record a little bit uh, it's got some soft vocal samples that come in some very clean guitar some various strings and stuff the beat comes in about halfway which is kind of something that i picked up that a lot of his songs kind of shift around the midpoint mm-hmm. uh, when, when the song kind of adds an extra layer or changes or something uh but yeah i, I definitely understand the portery vibes immediately on this with like I don't know the, the, the kind of the glitchy sampley nature of it, but also the hints of like Eastern influence and stuff that Porter has a lot of in his music. Uh, the guitar tone specifically reminds me a bit of like Hotline Miami soundtrack, which I know I've talked about before. But like, oh, shit, uh, a handful of tracks on this album gave me the kind of similar like tone, I guess, of the Hotline Miami soundtrack, which is it's kind of cool. But it's it's all to be clear, no vocals on this album as far as lyrics go so it's all just like it's all music which i i'm i'm a fan of but don't don't expect me to have some some wise profound outcome <laughs> yeah this music. i mean i guess that's not fair you could expect it because we we talked about replica from one tricks point never and we had quite the discussion on yeah. quite the adventure there but i didn't have a similar experience i guess is what i'm what i'm getting at here this one yeah it i feel like this is going to be a pretty cut and dry discussion just because it's just about music and there's not i don't i mean i think there's a general emotional feel that goes with these songs sure like maybe a little bit of an arc but there's not like an, a through line kind of like how we found in replica where it was like right. this dystopian industrial future <laughs> like yeah. story that happens there's nothing like that here so it's kind of i don't know it's and you're you're right like his music, it does have that, it has a very, very, I don't know, it has a bridge, I guess is what I would yeah. say, like, which is not, tip, like, it's not something that you hear necessarily in other music in this style, because, like, there's a lot of, like, really loopy and sampley music that I listen to where it's just, like, that for four minutes yeah. as the song, and then he kind of switches it up, which, I don't know. I feel like makes him a good option to, if you are looking to get into this type of music, Yeah, like it has a more traditional song structure, I guess. And I don't know. I don't, I, I just like it. I like, uh, I like the, the just really clippy tiny loops that he employs where yeah. it sounds like there's just, you're hearing something progressing kind of five seconds at a time like yeah i mean it's it's kind of like i guess we'll get into this a little bit later as well but like a lot of electronic music in general is kind of structured that way where at least in in like when i think of like classical house music and stuff like that yeah where it starts simple it's just like a beat and maybe a bass line and then it just kind of gradually layers on until like halfway through the song you have just this just so many layers and so many things happening that it's it it feels like it's building momentum and for some people i think that takes too long for them to get into but uh, i think it's it's a very common staple in like electronic music at least classical electronic music i guess yeah and for sure like house music especially yeah which is weird because this guy like i had really never done any kind of background looking up whatever on him specifically and I was looking it up just for the podcast and everything, and he's classified in a lot of areas as house. And I never really kind of made that connection, which listening to it now. I it, totally co- made that connection just, just co- to get that out there. Yeah, like, of course, like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I, <laughs> It's like I listened to him 
in a different way than I would listen to house music for somehow, I guess. No, for sure. I I think there's definitely a distinction, but there's definitely also that kind of the, the structure, the underpinnings of house music. And I call that out specifically a bit more on a couple of other tracks. But yeah, I, I think that makes sense to label him as a, a house musician, but also to like say that there, there's something, it's not like an instant, immediate kind of reaction, especially with Metal Bird. It's not like a super like drum driven track, I guess, like yeah. a lot of house music is. Yeah, the drums are kind of, I mean, the drums definitely help in later songs, but this one, and this one, like, I, I'm going to do the thing where I just describe feels since there's no uh, <laughs> sure. no lyrics. But you're, this you're, one... you're going to have to do that for all the tracks because I do not, do not have any of those uh, associations, I don't think. Well, Except for I, maybe one track. I will definitely do that because that Guide me. it was a pretty big thing whenever I was listening to this album just because uh, I do have kind of a deeper connection with right. Gold Panda that I don't entirely know if I'm going to go into, but like this album specifically, I'm definitely going to like, so I don't know this song metal bird. Normally I talk of uh floating whenever I feel like, like sure. listen to stuff like this. This one doesn't get, ever give me that feeling. It gives me the feeling like I'm traveling through a city. I'm very like on the ground. Maybe I'm hmm. in a bus. Maybe I'm just, I'm, I'm in some sort of transport vehicle traveling through a city on the ground and it's like i don't know it's it's rainy this album is very like rainy for parts of it for me and it's just i don't know this uh this song i whenever my daughter was going to be born i quit the pizza place and started a new job like the job that I currently have, or at least working for the company that I'm currently living or working for. Yeah. I started that job in the city. So it was like the first time I used to hate the city. I still don't really <laughs> like it, but I used to like hate it with a passion. Like the second I entered the city, a second I crossed the, the bridge. Yeah. The city. Louisville. <laughs> you, need to, you, need <laughs> like... you just need to get a shirt that just says the city and has the Louisville skyline. <laughs> just like, outline or whatever. So the city. It. The city. Uh, but yeah, this like so the second I crossed the bridge, I would just hate everything because I just didn't like it, and yeah. I don't know why. And so this was kind of like because the drivers over there are just the worst. Yeah, the drivers <laughs> anywhere that's not where I'm currently exactly. at. Like, <laughs> the drivers are always the worst. But it was just something I had like a mental block, and I kind of yeah. had to force myself to get through it. And this song reminds me of that, and it started making me realize that. I used to listen to this album more and I made that connection back then. And I don't know how I just forgot this. I I will blame it on maybe lack of sleep or (laughs) just like trying. It was was a big time, like in general in your life, like there's a lot of changes, like you're you're dealing with a lot of new stimuli, right? Yeah. So I guess in that respect, it's easy to have one of them kind of just drowned out by all the others. Yeah. So this song was like my ode, my ode to now I have left the area that I'm currently at. I'm, I'm thrust into the city daily and that's just kind of, I don't that's know. Interesting. So I, I said, I didn't have a lot of those kind of feelings or those kind of like scenic imagery kind of things pop into my mind. But one thing that was fairly constant throughout this album was the feeling of being in like a high rise apartment. Mm-hmm. kind of a thing and just like looking out over the city so i think we we have different mental perspectives obviously because you had the association of you literally driving to the city every day <laughs> or whatever but like I, I think it's interesting that we both kind of have associations there where it's it's very much not a rural album which i guess that can be said about it, it being house music in general like yeah this kind of like stuff only happens in clubs right it doesn't happen out in the country where people have bonfires and, and that show, which they should maybe we yeah. should start that maybe we should start like a bonfire disco out, <laughs> out, in, the, out in rural indiana <laughs> i'm oh sure we'd have God. a huge turnout yeah all like four house fans that live <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah i mean I, I just i don't know a lot of the album feels like i'm like the sun's setting a little bit i there's kind of like this orange tinge on the city skyline from from this apartment 
maybe set like in the 90s 80s maybe 70s probably not that far mm. back but just that kind of like kind of orange hazy era is, is where my mind goes for a lot of this album yeah mine definitely goes in my car like driving and just right. kind of getting into the city listening to your favorite gold panda song in my car track number two on the song. Boom. <laughs> Which, uh, i i said is your favorite song i'm assuming it's not but it could be is it your favorite gold panda song it was just no. a segue it is not my my favorite gold panda song is not on this album but i do really like this one cool immediately i liked this one more than metal bird well hell yeah uh it's, it's got a bit more of like a hip hoppy vibe it's got some nice strings some of the samples in this song i i didn't check this but they remind me a lot of some of the samples on Kendrick Lamar's Damn. Mm -hmm. Just that whole album has some similar kind of like stretched vocal samples, I feel like. And so it, it kind of like hit me in that space, I guess, which I'm, I'm a fan of Damn. I'm a fan of Kendrick Lamar. We both are. We argue about which album of his is the best. <laughs> but this one specifically like had that Damn feel to me. Yeah. Uh, I like the instrumentation used. There's like a, a, po a point in the song where there's this kind of like toy vibraphone kind of thing mixed with like some, I put in quotes, childlike uh, vocal samples where they're like pitched up and, and it sounds juvenile or, or whatever. They're, again, kind of similar to what Porter does with his thing. But I thought that was just kind of like an interesting mix, I suppose, with having some sort of like younger aspect pulled in to it uh and then there's this like eastern stringed instrument kind of thing that comes in later that sounds nice which again bring in that in eastern influence that you mentioned like i don't know it's it's all around it's a very nice song i enjoy it yeah this one it's it's kind of a break from his older style i think and it's it is the biggest song off of this album like it's one of his bigger songs if, if you can call it that i guess uh and I do, I do really like it. Like it's, it is like Eastern sounding. It's got like kind of that little bit, little hint of uh, of older Gold Panda, but with the new kind of like old school hip hop type yeah. intro and uh, the drum beat. It's like, it's got like this blasty feel. It's got that trap snare, whatever that yeah. is, and it's like got that i don't know how to describe it other than say it's boom clappy like it's got yeah the, like i don't <laughs> boom, boom 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 clap boom yeah clap, clap and uh yeah dude that toy vibraphone that marimba whatever the fuck it is the the bell xylophone thing yeah it's it's a sound that gets employed a lot and it's just i always like it because it kind of just takes me away this does it, take, uh, does it take you back to your childhood uh no i but it does it it takes me to a different place in my mind and this this song so like if we're going by my my previous associations this one it's like i don't know i get to the city and i have i have it's called in my car mm -hmm. but this song is like i'm i'm out on the streets now this is i'm getting out of my car like interesting i don't know necessarily why like i was listening to this this album and it's kind of like a dream that you're trying to remember and you can't really make too much sense of it but this one it's like i'm out i'm surrounded i can feel the breath of the city the yeah. the life of it and i i don't know if that's just me associating it because of like the hip-hop type beat thing right or if if it's the fact that there's like a vocal sample that's just like get up get up up like and it's telling me to get up out of my out of my car, out of my whatever. seat, out dance of my around seat. on the streets. Yeah, dude, <laughs> dancing. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't know, man. It's it's weird because I don't have too much, I guess, ability to properly say exactly what I'm thinking. But right, yeah, I feel like that's also kind of a vibe that i was getting for this album and that's why i didn't like i didn't try to transcribe it <laughs> just because there, there's like it it's fun to listen to and like my mind does drift and go to those places but it's not like a conscious thing i suppose or it's not like vivid enough for me to like define it and that's why it kind of i i describe my my apartment as being kind of hazy and orange just kind of like kind of like a blur I suppose, in some ways. Also, I just want to call out, like, this track is 
called In My Car. The previous one was Metal Bird, which is presumably referring to an airplane. Yeah. It's the only, it's the only Metal Bird that I'm like thinking of. So I think it's interesting that you're shifted maybe <laughs> one step ahead because I'm thinking like, okay, Metal Bird, maybe he's arriving in the city via airplane. And track number two, In My Car, he's like, he's in his car driving home for the first time in a while. Like he's been out of town, now he's back in town and he's driving home kind of a thing but you're, you're just a step off and end in the wrong direction perhaps yeah. because this is about you leaving home and going someplace and my random conclusion that i just came to is that he is he's returning home from someplace so well fun, you know fun doodlings i mean i guess i'm just i i would say i'm one step behind or in the wrong direction because there's no way i could i could come up with a segue for the next song <laughs> Chiba Nights <laughs> Chiba Nights Track what's a Chiba three. this this song is the first like definitively house song on the album oh yeah and my first note is like this is that house shit I like <laughs> that's, that's my first note on it something about the, the synth that is used like the bass synth in this track it's used in a lot of house music and it, it I don't know it always just like gets me in the mood to listen to house music it's, it's great I think this this is one of my two favorite tracks on the album i'm not sure if it's my favorite one but it's kind of an interesting like experience i guess going from in my car which is kind of like more laid back and, and hip hoppy, to this kind of like almost full-on house track kind of yeah. it, ca it caught me off guard because I, I had no idea what to expect with gold panda but uh <laughs> yeah this, this was the moment where it kind of the album kind of clicked for me well cool i i like this one it yeah this is where i kind of made the association to house that i had never made previously somehow like <laughs> i still don't understand that like yeah this is how this is house music this song like it's i mean it's not definition textbook house music i guess but a lot of it is and yeah. there's a lot of sounds in there like the bass the the really bumpy bass the yeah. fucking like synthy <laughs> keys that it's just like you would you could walk into any like club playing house music and it's like yeah that that's, that's, that's it it makes sense house. this is <laughs> but, the setting this is not unexpected at all but so then there is a point where it's like i don't know maybe a 30 or 40 seconds into it it's like the song stops and then restarts yeah. out slightly out of time it almost makes it feel like the song flips right but then uh it it kind of comes into play whenever the main melody gets brought back in and it's kind of like it's got this groovy feel for and sure this song it kind of takes me out of the thought that I was in about like going to work and I, now I'm trying to a club. Well, this is like, okay. So maybe this is after work. So you woke up your day, you went, you, you drove to the city, you got in your car, you got out of your car, you worked for the day and now you're unwinding. It's, it's after, after work. <laughs> this one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm just trying to paint my own narrative here, and I have no reason to do so. No, I like your narrative, because mine is kind of, like, all over the place, because this is actually, so this takes me before, before, like, I was 18, so I think I was 18, I don't know, at some point, when I was, like, 18 or 19, uh, my, like, family on my dad's side is German, so he, like, wanted to take us all to Germany, like, mm -hmm. to go to, to the the town where, like, our family's from. So, right. Uh, Contrasting the city with the town. Yeah. And it's, like, this... I mean, we, we stopped at, like, big, big cities like Berlin and Munich and stuff. And this is actually kind of where it takes me. Because I can just remember, like, the freedom of being in another country and just being out at like midnight in a in, in another country like drunk as an underage person in America <laughs> but right. of age in this country and it's just like this is where it takes me like the did you hit up any any bibliotech or not bibli fucking bibliotech <laughs> just <laughs> fucking I, german lessons come on man uh i i had a few times and there were just a, it was it was a crazy time is... Yeah, that, yeah that, the way you phrase that <laughs> makes it sound like it was, I had a few times. <laughs> like, there, there, there was some, some fishy business happening there. <laughs> we'll just say I, I vaguely remember, but I think at least there's at least one picture of me on some random person's Facebook where I'm just like blackout. I mean, not blackout because <laughs> I, I slightly remember it, right. but 
he walked up to me and I think I was wearing like a Pink Floyd shirt or something. And he was also wearing a Pink Floyd shirt. And he was like, <laughs> Pink Floyd shirt. What's up? What's your name? And I think I just like yelled back at him. I'm really <laughs> fucking drunk. Like, <laughs> And that's, that's like, that's the time that I get taken back to. And this is like, just, but it's, it's not like the drinking or whatever. It's like the freedom, I guess. Yeah, that I the wasn't, freedom of drinking. <laughs> yeah, that like I wasn't feeling at the time that I first started listening to this album, I guess. It's right. like, you feel like you have these responsibilities in my mind, as it always does, is going back to, I it's guess. simpler time. <laughs> yeah, like it's the nostalgia. Not necessarily yeah. for a great time, but for a time where I feel like I had less responsibility, which I mean, seems like it'd be pretty common but it's just like where my mind goes a lot or at least it it does still but it used to more so i guess interesting but i wonder yeah, if, in, 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 if your pink floyd shirt that you were wearing was was pink and green it it was <laughs> actually blue and green but but Damn, for the sake of track that number that would have been a great segue <laughs> for the sake of track number four pink and green we can Hell say yeah. it was pink and green good it, it was so, a pink and green shirt now we're talking about pink and green. <laughs> the this, offbeat yeah yeah at, no at the beginning of this sorry I, i'm gonna start all of these songs just no you do it you do it you're rambling a lot at the end for your your narrative story yeah so you I, do I, it. I just wanna i have to hear myself talk is what i'm getting at otherwise i feel like i'm just not doing anything I'm not doing my job but yeah your the job. offbeat <laughs> Gee, we, we get paid right <laughs> the uh the offbeat at the beginning of this track it was really messing with me and then like after a short moment the the kind of beat comes in and, and the melody comes in and it's it's got a really nice groove to it but it was kind of like jarring at first very solid ambient vibes on this one it's very like ambient house kind of blending and it's it's just it's it's a pink and green time i feel it yeah this this one like whenever i was listening to it for the first time and like kind of all these memories were coming back this one just hit me in like a way a real way yeah it's uh yeah it's just like it starts off like the actual sounds are really like fuzzy lonely the beat is really like off kilter it's like limping the yeah. beat is like it's just like you don't know what's happening after the kind of more upbeat sound of chiba nights it's like this one is the rain coming in after it's the realization like if chiba nights was me like having nostalgia for the past i guess at this point in my life this is me being like no get out of the past like what what's happening what am i doing snap what? back to reality yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh but th yeah it's like the song is kind of just rolling around on a table that's off balance and it doesn't really know what it's doing the music kind of i feel like the music wants some some clarity it wants to remain still and it's asking for it but it just can't stay still it's too drunk it's drunk yeah. on, a, on a street in berlin you know definitely uh this one like i don't know it it kind of gave me a big realization about i think why i like the music that i like and so all this music it's like we, you were talking about the the really short loops very loopy and it's just a lot of samples and just something in my mind clicked. It's like the samples are things from the past that are being brought to the present to try to create something new. And it made me think about like nostalgic thoughts being brought to the present that it are being like captured in these loops. So like, I yeah, feel like there's so many times, like I'm stuck in a nostalgia loop all like a lot. And it, it's just like these short little loops because I remember like a short time, a short sample from the past and it's just being caught over and over and over again. And this, this song just kind of put that in perspective. It was like a song because the song, it made me, I don't smoke anymore, but like cigarettes or anything, I mean, anything, but <laughs> <laughs> cigarettes specifically is what made this song made me want to just sit outside at like three in the morning. Like I used to. Yeah. And smoke and then that's kind of what made me think like shit is that why i like this music so much because it's just like smoking I, music to you yeah like it, it's i think it's because all of this is like an, a nostalgia trigger and i'm constantly looking for it but even the music is formatted in a way that's like short loops of previously made 
music right. or outwardly made music, I guess. Yeah, I it's it's kind of collecting past things and, and reconfiguring them to fit in a modern kind of setting, which is like, I, I guess, akin to you reflecting on your memories and, and kind of yearning for that kind of nostalgia. <laughs> but at the same time, understanding that you can't and, and kind of meta criticizing yourself for it <laughs> i guess and so, I, don't, I don't know it's, it's it's a weird metaphor it's a stretch it's but uh, it, i think it's interesting yeah uh and i don't i don't know how to like segue well if you're like yeah I mean, people know it's a segue at this point maybe you're having some some flashback memories right to some some time in the past and you're you're trying to like make them still relevant maybe if you were an artist you would and you had a friend that had died <laughs> at some point in your, your tragic history your backstory you know you, you'd want to bring them back to life through yeah. music so maybe you would you would write a song for a dead friend and that would be track number five on this <laughs> album <laughs> sure <laughs> sure go for it joey i'm gonna stop stop talking just to talk no it's i feel like i'm doing that as well this song like, yeah, but see, yours is more interesting. What, what's, what's been happening is I just describe general sounds in the track, and then you talk for a much longer period about what it means, and I think that's the more important thing, because I didn't get any of that shit. For this but song. it's more about what it means to me, and that's not... Well, that's it's, not... it's interesting to, to a listener. It's interesting to me. It's less interesting to you, I guess, because you live it, but... Yeah, I guess I'm doing a true. show, Joey. It's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this song, so like the last song, it feels lonely, pink and green. It feels lonely and off, off beat. This one, it feels like combative. It feels like yeah. it's attacking you. There's these like taunting chants that come in as the, the vocal samples. But then like, I don't know, it just kind of comes right at you. And then, then a synth line comes in, it like tones it down a little bit. The chants fall out and it starts to feel more liquid, I guess. But, yeah. Uh, it's got these frantic drums behind it, but the synth line kind of keeps it slow and smooth. It's like the drums are fast, but but the actual melody is is pretty slow. It kind of feels slippery almost, like it's kind of just playing catch up. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of an artist named uh, Dub Physics, Ooh. which uh, he did. There was a song that we used to play at the pizza place called Marka. Uh, and it was dub physics and the strategy was the rapper on it but it's a sticking up you see me yucky duck room in the mouth i want <laughs> that guy yep okay uh, i remember that <laughs> yeah some of his other music is very very similar to to this and that's kind of where or at least from what i've heard i haven't listened to a lot of his music but i've listened to a handful of tracks and it kind of puts me in that kind of mindset with a similar like th there's a lot of energy to the beat but it's also very like synthy and and I don't know. It, it's it is kind of aggressive, like you said, and it feels like it, it's kind of like a fight song in in some aspects. But it's also more like more warped and electronic, I guess, than what I would imagine to be a, like a tribal fight song kind of a thing with all the chanting and stuff. But yeah, the soft chords come in and it changes the song entirely, like the, the feel of the song from that kind of chanting combative thing. And it just I don't know something about it. I noted it feels twice as long as it actually is like the song is like a slow burn it kind of like it grows and it feels like it's growing slowly but it's it's a pretty short song I mean I guess all these tracks are relatively short but it, something about it just makes it feel twice as long as it actually is to me yeah I get that feeling uh with some of his music and not necessarily that it's a bad thing but it's like I look at the track list there's 11 tracks mm -hmm. And the whole album is 44 minutes and 30 seconds. So it's like, I'm looking at it and I'm like, ah, these are all going to be pretty pretty short songs. But then all the songs feel longer than I feel like they should be. Right. And it's and like... I think part of that is because you're having such like... Not vivid, I guess, because you're having a hard time describing some of them and saying that they're like dreamlike. But because you're having such a like pronounced connection, I guess, you're kind of drifting off and getting lost in, in the layers of it and each individual thing you're just kind of you're kind of floating lost at sea yeah in each of the tracks i would definitely d say that because uh while metal bird didn't necessarily f sound floating to me this one kind of did but more like a 
I don't know. At the beginning, it was like a floats like a butterfly, stings like a bee type thing, where I felt like yeah. I was about to fight somebody. And then after, like, it kind of dropped, it was like the adrenaline wore off. And I don't necessarily know what that <clears throat> correlates to. Like, I don't remember having a specific feeling before, but this one just, it, it reminded me of feeling very angry at something, which... I mean, the song, like, I did say it sounds combative, but, like, right. obje objectively, I feel like it's not an angry song. Like, <laughs> I don't know why I'm feeling that. Yeah. But, like, the beginning, it makes me think of, like, times where I felt very angry about something and then just can immediately out of nowhere not feel that anger anymore. Like, it just washes away. And it's, I don't know. Like, it's a thing that, like, in the past, I've had like anger management issues like that's sure. one of the reasons i had to go to therapy at a certain point in my life right. not necessarily like any time since i've been a, a, an adult but like I, it just reminds me of times when i was younger where i like i just get these like flashes of anger and then it's just gone and i'm like fine but then it's like the world is still dealing with w the consequences right. of like there, there you, was an impact yeah, it's like you with somebody, and regardless of how you react, like, if you just randomly get really angry for whatever reason, you could barely say two words to the person, but they're still going to be like, what the fuck, even if yeah. you're, like, 30 seconds later, like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, <laughs> whatever. Right. But it's, I don't know, it just kind of made me think of that feeling. And Interesting. I don't know. Does this tie into the the narrative of you going going to Germany? Fly, flying to Germany in a metal bird, getting in a car, going to a nightclub, having 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 fun, getting wasted in a nightclub with Chiba Nice and Pink and Green. Where does that leave you in the narrative? I think the dead friend might be a past version of myself. And well, maybe. <laughs> Not no. to totally just throw your story in a different <laughs> direction. But maybe it's the guy in the Pink Floyd shirt. He's dead now. Wouldn't and that be some shit? A song for him. I go find <laughs> nostalgic for that time. <laughs> I go and finally find that picture of me with some random guy, and <laughs> it's like a memorial page on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> God well, I'd say you'd be pretty pretty real punk for writing a song about that guy and your experience getting drunk with that guy. Well, you know, I am real punk, so you are. You are. So it was track number six. I am real punk. I am real punk. <laughs> <laughs> this one takes the energy down a notch, which is kind of unexpected from a song called I am real punk. Like punk generally has like a lot of energy to it, at least in my experience. Um, but yeah, it takes the energy a little, little bit more subdued. There's a few different like string tracks that drive the kind of like musical element of the song. There's some like distorted scratchy samples that are like breaking through some kind of wall and then they kind of get drowned out with some like droning humming noise that, that kind of penetrates through. Uh, not to keep saying that, oh, this track reminds me of this, but this track reminds me of uh, Dead Mouse's While One Is Listened To album. Ooh. Just like, I don't know, something about the kind of weird peaceful nature of it. There's one track in specific, I think it's called Monday. I should have confirmed that. But there's one track specifically on that album that has a similar kind of like distorted voice kind of breaking through and like talking to you while the rest of the music is kind of just like gentle and, and peaceful and floating along kind of thing. So that's where my mind went for this one. Yeah, that's actually almost exactly where my mind went to. I mean, not necessarily going to, to Monday, but uh, like that feeling of something trying to break out or trying to escape, I guess it, except I don't know. I thought more of an animal, I guess. Yeah, like, I can see that. Trying to break out. But then there's like, I don't know. It sounds like bagpipes or something come in with like a single continuous note right yeah, at like after. Sound. Yeah, like it's just, it's it's very peaceful. And it is really weird that it'd be I Am Real Punk. Or maybe he's making a statement about how real, like, you know, punk real is. Real punk's about the, the emotion you put into it instead of the, the sound of the, the music exactly it's not about like punching people in the face playing really loud music fast yelling and whatever it's just like punk can be the piece that can actually cause the change instead of the the loud in your face thing that can 
sometimes not. I don't know, man. Yeah, at this I mean, point, I, mean, I think it's I think it's valid in, in a greater dis- discussion about punk music <laughs> and that like I think a lot of that louder aggressive stuff gets pushed under the rug as like being childish or immature and like oh you can't even like form a coherent thought because you're just so angry and, and ranty all the time no one's gonna take you seriously you know i do know <laughs> i know i know all too well <laughs> this <laughs> i don't know what's happening oh, for for all uh for all uh people out there i got my my second shot today not to be controversial but it shouldn't be. <laughs> so. Shouldn't be. It's not. It's not. 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 Not on this podcast. But uh, yeah. So my head's kind of in. I don't know. I've been really, I guess, introspective lately after listening to this album, and this is almost just like tripled it. Like I feel very, <laughs> very heady right now. Like yeah. I don't know this. This song it didn't have too great of a connection with me when I was. So originally. you're saying that you're not real punk? I'm not. I I don't think I am real punk. I think I'm still <laughs> stuck in the loud punk, loud like, punk, angry punk. Yeah, I'm just waiting for autumn to fall, and then maybe I'll maybe I'll learn as not, as not I very nice to wish somebody would fall. Oh, the person autumn. <laughs> <laughs> Track number seven is autumn fall, everybody, and it goes back to the the crackly lo-fi vinyl sound. Uh, that kind of like looped a lot and it reminded me a bit of metal bird just kind of like returning to that style of his song but it, it also like i don't know the drum sounds in it are very crisp i like it i like it more than metal bird it's similar and that like just that little fine nature and the guitar of it kind of it again kind of brings me to that hotline miami vibe uh and then at the end of it it's it's interesting there's like a very it's a pretty abrupt ending but like everything kind of cuts out except for this like little little short guitar lick that ends. But it's very fitting, even if it's abrupt. I kind of yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah, I like this song a lot. I don't know if it's like my favorite or anything, but uh, it it really points out this like shambling thing he does with the rhythm, like kind of how we we're talking about house music and how it just builds and builds and builds. Uh, like it adds little layers that add on to each thing and kind of make a different sound and it it shifts the previous sound a little bit. I feel like he does that with beats too in certain songs where it's like things can like, I don't know, the piano lead kind of comes in really loosely and it's like all like this slidey guitar thing kind of comes in. It's not necessarily feel, it doesn't necessarily feel like it comes in on the same beat as the piano lead coming in. But then it'll like all come in together with like a drum beat or something and it all fits perfectly in a way. And yeah. it's, it's like each thing individually kind of feels like it would be off from the other one. And then there's one piece that can kind of bring it all together. And that's just a cool feel whenever it finally kind of drops into that, that one beat that everything's meant to have. Well, fuck yeah. How, yeah. how does this fit in your, your narrative nostalgic journey? Dude. <laughs> You've lost I don't, that trail. I I haven't lost it, and it's it just doesn't rear its head too much until like two or three more songs from now. But okay, okay. this this one, it's just kind of a cool head boppy kind of kind of track that's just nice, and it just feels good to have wrapped as, around. As a me. quick aside, like I, I've discussed this new layer of Joey music being very like sample heavy and loopy, but there's also another element that I'm curious. I mean, I guess I know generally and vaguely how you feel, but how do you feel about like lo-fi hip hop and lo-fi? Like this, the, a lot of this vinyl crackly stuff that's happening. Are you like super into that? And do you think that it's again, due to the kind of like nostalgic nature of it? I do like it. But there there comes, I mean, of course, with anything, there comes a point where it's like, people are starting to do it too much, I think. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I thought about that for this album, even. I was just like, yeah, it's cool. But, like, I feel like I've I've heard enough of this kind of, like, layer. It is a cool effect. No yeah. no disrespect to, to Gold Panda. But, like, I, I think just it's an oversaturated thing right now. Yeah. Sure, and with having, having specifically just, like, layering a final crackle over some detuned stuff is just like 
it's cool, but yeah, I'm on the same yeah. page with you, I think. Yeah, I liked it back when it first came out and it was like a new thing. And then people were just kind of like, oh shit, people really like this. So let's just fucking do it on everything. Yeah. And uh, this, like, he used to do stuff like this, I feel like less. And then it kind of got adopted into the style for this album. And Interesting. Uh, he came out with an album in 2019 that didn't have it as much. And I, I think I really, I don't know if I necessarily like the album more, but I definitely like that it doesn't do that as much anymore. It's, I like it more when it's used like kind of how uh, on Nurture, where yeah. Porter was able to, and it wasn't the kind of crackly thing. That's, I mean, he did do that, but I like sure. it whenever it's used for an effect, kind of like how he did the mouse clicking, where it yeah. felt like you're A there phone recording or something. Yeah. Yeah. I like I like that whenever it's used to create an atmosphere like that, I guess. Yeah. Let's talk about nurture some more. <laughs> <laughs> I feel yeah, like we're never gonna escape it. <laughs> yeah, we won't. Not for not for months, I would imagine. But if you haven't listened to that episode and you're listening to this episode, I would absolutely recommend you check out both the album nurture and our episode on nurture, by the yes. way. It was, a, it was a real fun discussion last week. It was, and it was a real fun two weeks leading up to that discussion because we got to listen to the album a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great, and now we're in the aftermath of it, where we're talking about track number eight, Halyards. Yeah, Halyards, I, Halyards, Halyards. I I don't even know if that's a word. Me either, man. I don't. I didn't do any research. This one, though, I do. I do enjoy this one's. It's a nice kind of sound to it. Uh, it's kind of housey, but it's also bringing in some of those lo-fi vibes, kind of blending the two what I would consider prominent styles of this album with kind of the housing and, and the low five kind of crackly stuff. Uh, I really like the sound that it makes. There's some really nice keys and some bell sounds and stuff. It's very flowy and, and smooth and just a good time. Yeah. I, I actually non ironically wrote the, the actual words. Uh, the vibe is pretty vibey on this song. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. It is, it is, it is a vibe and so i don't know yeah it's got like a lot of really soft stuff like it starts out really with this high hatty drum but the, mm -hmm. the kick is really soft then the keys come in and they're soft over top of it and it's got this soft marimba that comes in and it's just it's a chill song it's i don't know it's it, it just helps me zone out i guess yeah and while this song didn't necessarily like bring any floods of memories back of the first few times I listened to this back in 2016 it it made me remember I guess just getting those peaceful moments where I could to have like the drive into work or something and mm -hmm. it's like I can remember feeling it's the way this song time. yeah like feeling the way this song makes me feel just in those times like this song definitely helps me just kind of like zone for a bit and not I guess focus on whatever's happening in Hell real yeah. life. Not necessarily I, that I didn't want to focus on having. I mean, a, I, think, like, I think that's fair to say. <laughs> <laughs> like having a kid is a lot, right? It's a lot of new stimuli. Again, it is saying like having having a space to kind of catch your breath amongst that is is a godsend. I would imagine. Yes, that's it. Was it's a space to catch your breath to kind of forget about the troubles that you're facing because. It's, I don't know. It's Raising a child's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. It's rewarding, but not easy. <laughs> most most rewarding things aren't easy, I suppose. It's a general life know. rule. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of video games that are pretty easy, and they're instantly rewarding. You just keep That's pushing true. that serotonin they, button all day. <laughs> they eat up a lot of time. That's an, See, I don't have that, just as an aside. like That's why I, I don't enjoy like idle games and clicker games like you do because it's that's not rewarding to me and i don't know if, if it's something wrong with me if it's something wrong with you it's something but... wrong with me <laughs> there's something wrong with me there's something wrong with you, <laughs> <laughs> something wrong with you and... uh, we're gonna get copyrighted we need to... <laughs> yeah because we sing it so immaculately <laughs> <laughs> track number nine is time eater boom like time the, eater like those idle games, games that eat up all of your time but don't eat up any of my time because a lot of money. previously mentioned i don't i wish i could I, i'm constantly like seeking something to like idly play but at the same time my brain doesn't work that way and i can't i can't focus on it and i'm also generally bad at multitasking so like 
I feel like just completely off topic, I guess, at this <laughs> point. But like people play idle games and clicker games and stuff while they're doing something else. I feel like a lot of the time and yeah. I can't do that. My brain just will not let me. I have to be hyper focused on one task. And that I, I think that's part of why I can't get into like mobile games and idle games and clicker games like that. I feel that like it's, I don't think people's brains are wired to do that. And I think people force it like to multitask to that level. Yeah. Cause I know there'll be times where like, I'm listening to music. I I don't play idle games really too much anymore. I've kind of slipped back into my old habits a little bit recently. <laughs> but <laughs> in the uh, past day or two. Yeah, in the past day or two. <laughs> but uh like there'll be times where I'm playing like idle games, listening to music, have like a TV on or something, and then I'm also like trying to look at like Reddit or play another game and then like right. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then a second hits and it's like my brain hit overload and I'm just like... Yeah, there's so much stimuli. Like, oh, God! And I just get like pissed off out of nowhere and I'm just like, I need to fucking stop. <laughs> Everything needs to be silent and I need to close my eyes for Turn a off the lights, lay face down on the bed for a second. <sighs> Track number nine. Uh, time Eater. Time Eater. I, I really enjoy this one as well. Uh, I did, The last half of this album really, really does it for me, I think. Uh, it kind of has this old detuned piano kind of like clavier kind of thing going on but it's not creepy or like off-putting like you'd expect it to be i guess or or that the initial reaction would normally be for that kind of sound uh the beat comes in around a minute and the song really kind of takes off it's very cohesive sounding with all of the instruments that kind of get layered and they just kind of complement each other even though it's like slightly off kilter i suppose and then like the two minute mark it it comes in with like a totally different sound it's, it brings in this like new synthy keyboard and then eventually it'll like bring back that kind of detuned piano kind of thing going in and then at the end there's this really weird boopy sub bass kind of thing <laughs> going on that's just a fun kind of like um autumn fall where it ended with that kind of spontaneous guitar lick at the end i feel like it's just kind of like a fun touch to to end the track that kind of comes out of left field yeah it's i definitely like the ending on this one i it's just kind of weird and out of left field for sure. Uh, this one is actually the one I was talking about where my my, my storyline picks Returns. back up, you know. <laughs> and it's because it starts off with these two, I guess, vaguely Eastern sounding tinny string mm -hmm. melodies. They're like kind of counterpoint, but it's, they're not really like, I don't know, they kind of come together, but they're also like so different that it's almost like they're trying to talk over each other. Interesting. And, so we have very different perspectives on that, then, I guess. Yeah. But I, I, like, explicitly was like, nah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not off-putting. It's not really, like, jarring, necessarily. I, I felt like it really, like, it worked well. See, I think it works well, but not for the same reason. Right. <laughs> like, uh, you, you think its its goal was to be a little wonky, right? I think so. But yeah. that's probably just because it fits the narrative that my mind made up. So, uh, what I felt coming back whenever I was listening to this album or this song was like one of the melodies was a previous version of me life, I guess. And then the other one was the current version of me, the current life. And they're kind of talking back and forth. They're trying to coexist and they it's working like maybe they aren't on the same page but it's working hmm. and then that that new that other sound comes in which is a pretty i don't know it's a it's a it's a sound that he uses a lot on like lucky shiner and companion the other stuff that i'm more familiar with by his, him or at least was more familiar with by him and right. that was kind of a callback to that but then it comes back and the beginning part gets kind of layered over that and it works together like how he always has like that one thing in the beat that brings it all together or that one like yeah. extra layer that will make it all work and that's kind of like i guess symbolic in the way that it let me realize that it can coexist i guess Definitely. that like like the future me i don't I spend too much time in the past, or at least spent 
too much time in the past at that point in my life where it was like an issue. And it was kind of telling me that, yeah, the pat your, your past is there and it's always going to be there and you will remember it as long as your brain stays functioning. But it's, I don't know. I, it reminded me of a, like the quote that like you stare too long in the abyss and the abyss stares back at you. It, but when, when thinking about memories, if you stare too long into your memories, it starts eating at you. Yeah. And it kind of, I guess, gave me perspective to not feel that way anymore, to feel like they're there, they're nice, but they can't take over your life. Like you can't let them, I guess. And that's kind of where this song left me. Like it, it can all coexist at this point. Interesting. That kind of like also almost ties in to the themes on nurture as well. Like, cause we're yes. still talking about nurture, but like a lot of that album we talked about was like Porter letting go of past experiences and, and focusing on being more present and being more focused on the here and now and enjoying the, the present more than worrying about the future or worrying about what happened in the past kind of a thing. So it's, it's interesting that you had, and maybe maybe it's kind of like you were predisposed to have those things because we both love Nurture and, and talked about that a lot. So maybe there's some bias there. But I definitely it, think there is. <laughs> but it's interesting that that's where you're like, your connection to this album is, is taking it. Which, I mean, I don't think it's unfair even even outside of the context of nurture i feel like you still would have had some similar experience when describing this album just because again you you're a very nostalgic guy like nostalgia comes up a lot on our podcast because that's that's been a big focus of you when talking about music that you had found in the past which makes sense right because it's it's music is tied at least I'm assuming to you and me, I feel like we've talked about this before, but how we tie music to certain eras of our life or certain moments in our life where you're like back in your Honda just yeah. fucking cruising around, like things like that happen. So it's hard not to get nostalgic. I, I think is what I'm trying to say when talking about music from a, a gone time. I like that. Very well put. It was kind it, of rambly, but you well, know. you know, I like it. I'm being super rambly tonight, so why not? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I just looked at the time. We're, we're coming up on an hour, which is far, far more than I expected to talk about this album. And we still have two tracks to go, people. Oh, so, my God. Well, so buckle better... up, and we're going to get on with track number 10. Unthink. Unthink. I think this is this. it's either this one or Chiba Nights is my favorite track on oh, the shit. album. I really, Hell really yeah. like this. this. It comes in towards the end of the album. And it's got this very like spacey, droopy sounding organ key and like some slight ambient effects that give it like a funereal vibe to me. It's very like somber and reflective, I think. Uh, despite having little to no notes on this track outside of that, it's it's I don't know, just it's such a feeling that I, I really enjoy. Yeah, I like it a lot. Like it's one of my favorites, and it's weird because it's just. I don't know, like, we were talking about his songs having bridges where stuff gets shifted up, and there's really not much of that in here. There's, like, a soft static in the background throughout the whole song. It does, I mean, the melody, I guess, changes up a little bit, but each note kind of has that shifting, warpy sound yeah. throughout it, and it's kind of just, wa like, the song is just wandering around aimlessly in a way. I mean, like, obviously it's a cohesive thought still, but, like, it's, I don't know. It it feels, not, I guess, eerie, but not, like, scary. In a, I don't know. It just feels kind of cre creepy, but not in, like, a spooky way. Yeah, I think I think it's kind of where, where I got the funereal kind of sound, where it's yeah. just, like, it's, it's definitely not happy, <laughs> yeah. but it's also not, like... I don't know. It, it's it's more of like reflective, I suppose, than like sad about the, the funeral that's happening in my yeah. life. Which, yeah, you're not it's... sad that he died. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's a discussion for another time of, of just my general outlook on death. But but yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's not bad to. I don't know. I don't. 
it there's a time and place for grieving. Yeah. And I guess a funeral is, is <laughs> funeral that, is, that place, is, but <laughs> it's the cutout time specifically for but grieving. I, but I don't think I don't I don't know. I don't I don't see it that way. But, yeah. But maybe I'm just back. Are you one of the celebration people? Not really. I just uh, don't. It's just part of life, man. It happens. Yeah. It's going to happen to all of us. We're all going to die at some point. At some point. It's not abnormal. It doesn't like I don't know. To me it, it does it's not super noteworthy when people die. <laughs> Are you but, saying you're not gonna be sad when I die, Jeremy? I will on be this, devastated on when this you die. podcast. <laughs> I'm just gonna stop <laughs> responding. <laughs> you're gonna be like, and what do you think about track number seven? If, if that happens, Joey, <laughs> we're we're gonna be internet famous. Hell just yeah. Just because we mentioned that now. I hope we're doing it on a video podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but then I can see you and it won't be as suspenseful. Well, maybe we'll do one where, where, for some reason, we're each recording video separately. Yeah, you're going to be on kids. your deathbed. We're going to be yeah. recording an episode on your deathbed from the hospital. <laughs> and I'm going to be at my home. You're and just going to think everything's normal. You're going to be like, yeah. yeah um, you're you're going you're gonna to stop talking, and I'm going to be like, Joey just died. And you know what, Joey? <laughs> I think your good times are just beginning. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Track number 11, your good times are just beginning. That was the actual best segue that we ever could have made, <laughs> and you, you just did it, Jeremy, so we might as well pack it up right now. <laughs> so you're saying my good times are just ending? <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> that was the best it's going to be. Coming off of the sad, droopy sound of unthank, this one kind of has this strange tinge of hope and promise of things to come. Like I mean, it says it in the title, but it also yeah. feels that way. It feels like it's like a new day. And things are kind of looking up from on tank where it's kind of dreary a bit. There's got some strong bright piano chords and upbeat drums and this trumpet comes in towards, towards yeah, like dude. the middle end and whew, it hits and it's fucking phenomenal. I love it. Yeah. This uh that those horns, like they they get me after like I don't know, like listening to a whole album is like an experience and then mm -hmm. that's probably why I like put so much emphasis on the end of it because it's like the end of a movie where it's like it's got to be big or whatever and yeah you've, you've reached your conclusion yeah and uh also i feel like some of these songs are just like exercises on how good your internal beat keeping is sure until the actual drum comes in to tell you if you're like <laughs> right or not <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and sometimes i'm wrong sometimes i'm right i'm not gonna tell you all how much i'm wrong <laughs> 20% 20, 20 correct. <laughs> yep. Uh, but this song, like, thematically hit home really hard because it was like, it just reminded me of, I don't know, like, it's called Your Good Times Are Just Beginning. It's It reminded me of the realization that I kind of had in Time Eater where it's like, everything can coexist and then you can start living. And it's like, it, it is hopeful you can still see like bad times are not gone. They're not gone forever, but you can see the sun on the horizon. Yeah. And knowing that, I mean, your good times are just beginning is very, I don't know, symbolic. Cause it's like you're, you have a, a child and I feel like people with like postpartum depression probably can hopefully if they ever get out of it, feel this. Yeah. Like, I mean, surely you'll, we'll just hope that you're getting out of it but it's like you you get out of it and then you're like shit i have a kid now and it's awesome and like i get to experience and help this this person become a person and like each instead of i guess just going through the day and like parent mode where you're like oh, i gotta feed him gotta change the diaper gotta put him to bed gotta I'm living on autopilot and not being able to like kind of live in the moment and feel these things. It's, it's the realization that you're starting to come out of it. And while you're not all the way out of it, you can start to fully enjoy the things that you're supposed to be enjoying and experience those. I mean, even experience things for the first time again through somebody else's eyes, I guess it's that feeling. That's interesting. So so what you're saying is you're about to hit the golden age of Joey and this podcast is gonna be flawless. Yeah. Because you're 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 hitting the good times. The times are just beginning 
for this podcast and, and for your personal life. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm excited for you that th- this kind of feels like the time for you to reconcile all of your, your past selves and your current self and your future self <clears throat> kind of, kind of, it seems like you're eager to maybe not eager, but it seems like you're ready to at least deal with that and, and step into the next chapter of, yeah. uh, of being a person. Yeah, the nostalgia thing, it's uh, it's definitely a now issue that I'm getting, hopefully, dealing with. But uh, I just for all the people out there, I had the realization about uh, not being a, a an autopilot parent like a long time ago, back whenever this album came out. The nostalgia thing is a thing that I'm definitely still working on. <laughs> yeah. As you can, I'm sure, know by the fact that that's half of my discussion about anything. Right. But uh, I very much love being a father, and this album, at least, I-, I think had a bigger impact on me transitioning into... Fatherdom. Going, yeah, I guess, I guess that's what it is, just back in the day. So I, I don't want to derail and talk for another twenty minutes about this, yeah, but yeah, no. um, do you think it has a bigger impact on you now, being more reflective of that time than it did at the time? I do. I think it did. I think at the time it just helped, and it was gone. Like I listened to it a few times. It kind of shifted my perspective a little bit. And then it was like, I mean, I I didn't even fully remember this album having an impact on me until mm-hmm. I started listening to it again. So like, I think now it's, I think it's kind of revitalizing change for me Hell now yeah. in the same way that it did in the past. I Dude, guess I'm so ready for change this year. <laughs> this fucking 2020, everyone's saying it, it was a shit show. Nobody had a good 2020. And I feel like a lot of uh, th- a big part of 2021 for a lot of people is is returning to some sort of normalcy. But an extension of that is going beyond what was previously normal. People just want to get out and live now, yeah. which is is exciting. People want to make big changes. I'm fucking trying my my damnedest to make big changes in my personal life as well this year. And and like I'm I'm trying to get out more. I'm trying to be more be more present and more. I don't know. I guess alert of being alive because I, I feel like that's where you have a tendency to go to nostalgia and and to wish you were back in those times. To me, it's more of like I don't want to say dissociating. I I don't think I have like borderline personality disorder or anything like that. But like just existing and being aware of the fact that you're existing and doing something with that because the, I just accepting control. Which is kind of weird because I mentioned that I was kind of a control freak to begin with, but maybe maybe I'm not, and this is just uh, I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is I'm I'm I want to be more alive than I have been this year, more so than any other year. So I'm um, I'm making changes, hitting the golden era of Jeremy. Joey's in the golden era of Jer- of Joey, and that means it's the golden era of fucking feedback loop. Next week uh, though, hell yeah, I'm I'm switching the script, Joey. We're not doing the album that, that I mentioned. What? I've what been the so fuck? so indecisive today about what album we're gonna do next. Instead of doing the album that we decided on, I say we decided on. It was really just me because I was the one picking the album. Uh, instead of doing that album, we're gonna be doing Overworks uh, State album Ooh. That, that came out in twenty seventeen. I had to look real quick, but yeah. So Overwork, it's O V E R. W E R K. I feel like I spelled that wrong, even though it's, like, it's <laughs> overwork with an E instead of an O. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to listen to his 2017 album. I think it was his first actual album, not his EP. I could be wrong on that. But uh, yeah, pretty great album. We're going to do that this this week and come back and talk about it next week. <laughs> uh, and I hope you guys will also come back and talk about it next week and stay in our feedback loop. Bye. Bye. Thank you.